Hi, this is your five minute geography lesson. We're covering theme seven, element one, social development. Planners are out on the desk. I'm Mr. S and I'll be your five minute teacher. Well, today we're looking at the first of unit seven. We're looking at the idea of social development and how unevenly it's spread across the world. So let's start out with actually looking at how do we measure what social development is. Well, on the screen, we've got some suggestions on how this might be done. So we've got things like the literacy rate, which is the amount of people who can read and write expressed as a percentage. Now that's good because it's going to tell us about how many people effectively have went to at least a primary school level of education, but it does have some limitations. It's very hard to measure how many people can read and write in places that are effectively war zones or in places that are very unorganized like squatter settlements in low income countries. We've got patient doctor ratios. And again, this is good because it's going to show us how many doctors there are to, um, to the number of patients. So if you've got a really big ratio, so one doctor to hundreds, and, uh, to hundreds of people, then that means that you're probably not going to get a very effective healthcare. But if that ratio is low, so let's say 1 to 50, then it means that you're probably going to get a bit more time with that doctor and be able to see a doctor when you want to. But and does not take into account in some low income countries they've now introduced online GPs so you can see a doctor using your smartphone and then get a prescription fulfilled virtually. There's the infant mortality rate and that tells us how many infants die before their uh, first year or within their first year of their life and this is an important indicator because it tells us how good the hospital care is at the time of birth but also it all tells us about the health of the child and the availability of resources to help keep that child alive but not all deaths are recorded and not all births are recorded in low-income countries so it's very hard to know exactly what the infant mortality rate is we have access to safe water and this is going to show us the quality and the available supply of water for drinking. In some low income countries access to safe water is a major issue and the water they're drinking can cause health problems in itself. But the quality of water can change rapidly so if there is a recent flood a place that had recent high quality water may now be suffering from um, poor quality disease ridden or debris in the water which makes it unsuitable for drinking. And as water becomes more expensive in cities, then not everybody will be able to afford access to water which means that it then drives them to the unsafe sources. So that the availability of water is there but they can't access it because they don't have the money. And then finally, we've got life expectancy. So that's the average age a person is likely to live to in one given place. And that's a good indicator because it tells us that if they've got a high life expectancy, then generally they're probably going to have a good health system there, maybe it's education system to show them how to keep themselves healthy. But there does have limitations. So where we've got a very high infant mortality rate, so there's a lot of people actually dying before they, they reach the first birthday, but the people who do survive do tend to have a higher life expectancy. So the average doesn't show because there's a lot of deaths but there's not as many people living, but the people who do live for longer are living a lot longer. So the average sort of is skewed with that one. Let's have a look at some of these in a bit more detail. So there are a few different types of social development. We're talking about how are we developing socially? Well, we can talk, look at things like gender, health, education. Does every person have the same rights as everybody else? Because in some low uh, groups, gender, is not balanced males have more rights than females it could be that a group in terms of religion so one ethnic group or one religious group may not have as many rights as the other does the media have the right to say what it wants or is it controlled by the state all of these things are types of social development so if we look at gender in the UK we tend to have gender equality but there are still imbalances. So on average, men still earn more uh, money than women in jobs. But in some countries, the girls have even fewer rights. So in some locations, women are effectively property 
and they can't get a job, they can't go to school, they can't own a car, uh, drive a car. So these things would show that actually the, the social development of a location is actually less. Um, so gender looks at life expectancy, it looks at literacy rates between the male and female populations as well as others. It's calculated this as a GII or a gender inequality index. We can look at health and this looks at how much money is the government spending on the healthcare system. And a higher proportion would indicate that there's more money going in, but also looking specifically at how much money or how are they tackling certain diseases. So in LICs around the, uh, the equator belt, we've got issues like malaria that need tackling. There's a big issue of HIV, which we're gonna come on to in another lesson. So these health factors, as well as, as we mentioned before, things like the doctor-patient ratio. And these all affect our development balances, which we're going to come on to in our next lesson. Finally, I want to have a look at HDI. So this stands for the Human Development Index. We've come across this in some earlier lessons. So if we relied on these measures on their own, they're probably not going to tell us the whole picture because, as we've seen here, there are limitations. The Human Development Indicator takes a range of social factors as well as economic factors into account when it's shown how developed a country is. So it takes into account our health. So it looks at the life expectancy of a country. It takes in our knowledge, which looks at the average years that somebody's expected to go to school for and the actual amount of years that they do go to school for as in um, education index and it looks at our standard of living so it looks at the GNI which is in effect how much on average does a person earn per year in dollars and that gives us our GNI and that's combined together to give us an overall score that's based on not just the money which we tend to look at because even when we talk about low income countries it's low income isn't it it's about money so it looks at a more holistic a more rounded approach across several different factors which is more of a benefit because it's going to take into account lots of different things that can influence how developed a country is well that's it for today now improve your educational development by completing the try it now tasks for homework class dismissed <laughs>